I think uh, I'm, I'm forced to uh, respond to what uh, Prof. Uh, has said this morning. First of all, I want to say that we got it wrong in getting Ken Oforiata to serve as a finance minister. We, we, we completely got it wrong, and it was quite shocking, you know. We, we, there was a divided position on that. Um, eventually, amongst the minority. Yes. Um, eventually, a collective decision was made, which I still think was a wrong decision. And I don't need to give you reasons why it was a wrong decision then, because obviously, if you look at what is happening or what has happened since he was appointed the finance minister, it tells you obviously that, you know, he he he's not he's not, he wasn't supposed to be the guy to to be there. Now, fast forward, as so we're going through the memory lane, fast forward to what actually happened you know, recently, mm -hmm. before the budget was read. Um, I don't think it is entirely fair on the minority, um, though we have a responsibility, but entirely fair, you know, to, uh, for Prof to indicate that we have, we have failed. We may have, but not in the same magnitude. If you look at what has happened so far on the minority side, I think we, yeah, what are the right questions or we could have probed further on the finance minister. All these things are, you know, being discussed internally. I mean, some of us have come out strongly that one and three, which were actually struck out, That's the should, conflict be, of interest should be reinstated. And then the over $100 million that was... Yeah, also put sure. into the because account. when you look at the seven points uh, or seven grounds of, of the motion of censure, we actually have, uh, I think let's say the first four, probably the, the, the strongest of, of our case. And there are questions to be an answered, which of course borders around criminality. The rest, which is basically to do with the incompetence and economic mismanagement and all those things, are actually quite difficult to prove, even though the economy is in tatters. Because even if you get two Nobel you know, economists, you know, they can give you a different policy directions. And, 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 and both will be wrong at a point until uh, you know, things go bad for one. So those things are quite difficult to, 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 to prove. But I thought the first four were, were, were the things that we need to. So we have, um, I think the Professor or Dr. Ayeni did indicate that they haven't completely taken them off the table. Mm -hmm. but, but then again, we have not given the guy the opportunity to answer those questions for us to further, you know. So when we bring it to the plenary, he is not going to be there to be questioned. Indeed. So we just become a, a political debate, more or less. But I hope that in that, because I'm particularly interested about the one and three, and um, I think I'll be one of the people to, to, to debate on the day. And those were the issues I want to bring back to the fold and prove the, 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 the criminality involved in all that. You, so uh, this report has been laid before the House, yeah. and you are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that there's actually evidence of conflict of interest against Ken Oforiata. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only that, but also borders around, you know, some criminality. And criminality? We, 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 yes, of course. I mean, you know, but, you know, we'll see what happens on the, on the day. Um, again, a, a, a decision was made. Uh, we selected the four people to be on this ad, ad hoc committee. And uh, um, there are different school of thoughts on, on, on that. You know, as to the, you know, the, the, the constitution uh, or the construction of this, uh, committee. Of this committee. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we have to make a collective decision, look at what should be or who should be there. And then that decision was made. On a hand side, you could say that, oh, maybe they should have maybe been a finance person in it. 
again, when you say this at this stage, it might sound as if, look, so you didn't know that we should do this or we should and that, do that. And that is my disappointment. You know, so that is my disappointment. I, I, I think uh, uh, people will say that, uh, okay, you know, leadership is tough. But this is the way we are. And I was sitting there <laughs> really surprised that on that day, Ken of Riata actually ended up being the one reading the budget. You, you were know, surprised. I, I was extremely surprised. I, I didn't, you know, if you, you, have, you have heard me uh, on the airwaves, I, I, was, I, was, I, I said that if Ken of Riata survives to read the budget, that, that will probably be one of the wonders of the world. And uh, <laughs> it happened. Yes. So it's and not it a happened. wonder of the world. Yes. To you. To me. I mean, in any jurisdiction, this guy should not be in office. Any jurisdiction. It, it, it's really amazing that he's been able to navigate his way through. And, and on the day of the motion of censure, I went to the committee as a, as a friend. Obviously, I'm not allowed to ask a question or just an observer. And the arrogance and the way in the manner in which he was answering the question, I thought, how could this guy be sitting here lecturing us when we have so much on him? But then again, a <laughs> um, friend of mine always says, we are, we are where we are. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had so much, and yet not so much was presented yeah. during this ad hoc committee hearings. I mean, one, 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 th one and three, I don't know how the decision was made, but I thought, again, we're talking about hung parliament and talking about a committee that had four on each side. It, it was shocking to me that my side actually agreed with the, with the, with the, with the um, um, no, it wasn't my majority side, with the, with the government side that one and three should be taken up to an extent that a letter was written to the finance minister within a day or so that he's not supposed to answer questions on those ones. Which was in the interest, conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. Which and you say is one of the strongest potent points absolutely. in there. Because you have, you have some you data. See, I was one of the people who raised, the, um, raised this issue in parliament. Mm -hmm. You know, I questioned him on in the same day as... Uh, one of our lady MPs also raised a similar question. I questioned him on the whole euro bond process, how the fee structure, you know, had been changed, and how some element of it cannot be traced. You know, like the, 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 they have increased the, 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 the fee generally in the fee structure, but the international, um, what is it called, the international advisors will know that we're still getting the same amount of money. Therefore, there's a differential that has not been accounted for, mm. and it's supposed to be going uh, to the local people. I think I stood here on your studio indeed, a few days ago, indeed. talking about how I, I, these guys are not, they're actually apprentices, and they have been since day one, since we started involving them in there. I mean, <laughs> Data Bank has never done Eurobond anywhere in the world, mm. anywhere. They have just tacked along in 2007 with Kufo. All the prospectus, everything was done by the international advisors and uh, all that. During our time, we used them once in 2014 as apprentices because the idea, as I said the other time, mm -hmm. was to build capacity. So we were, every, each euro bond, we were taking a different group of, you know, local investment bankers, if you call them, to, or bankers to take along. So we used them in 2024. We never used them again for the three or so euro bond we did. And then when this, uh, the MPP government started the Euro, Euro bonds again in 2018, that's when they started, and there's been a permanent fix on the, on the, on the Euro bond roadshow. But they do less than 1% of the Euro bond work. They don't write the prospectus. They are not duration, you know, managers. We just call them co Transaction advisors, but they do absolutely nothing. I mean, they do nothing. nothing. Well, they are supposed to, when the prospectus are written the same way as we all do, mm -hmm. to look at the prospectus and see if there are any mistakes 
and what about? I mean, well, maybe it would be unfair to say they do nothing, but uh, they, they go along as uh, reviewers. So your point is they do less work and get more money? And then they're getting more money, because as I said here the last time, we used to pay them only 50000 flat fee. Is this a fixed amount of $50,000? Amount, $50,000. Yeah, $50, Given to them, of course, when we take them along, their hotel bills and everything will be paid for by government, just as they right. do for their, you know. And then this was changed, and it became about 100,000 in 2018, plus some kind of a, a variable, you know, which is a, actually a percentage of the, of the entire proceeds. And it's been going and, up since. And, and that is where my question is that if you are still paying the international transaction advisors the same percentage, and you have increased it from 0 0.65 or so to 1%, then who is getting the difference? So this, I, I did not get a satisfactory answer when the minister came to the floor to answer the question. And it's in the hands that you can check that I wasn't satisfied because the answers I was given, he did admit, because I put it to him that these guys you take to the roadshow, they are apprentices. They are for capacity building, which he did agree. Did he mention at any point, because I'm, I, the, uh, one of the documents here, that some 151 million CDs is what Data Bank had yes, yes. received he, he did. He from did. all the euro bonds we have issued? Um, I'm not quite sure, I mean, because that question was uh, answered by, uh, was, was asked by um, a lady MP. And uh, the answer that he gave, because he w she was talking about the entire, you know, government bond, you know, activities, both uh, domestic and international. So I don't know what the minister was saying, whether the 151 he was talking about relates to all bonds they have done domestic and but by my calculation, on the euro bond, and because I know all the euro bonds specifically when they were done, my calculation comes to about 46 million U.S. dollars. 46 million dollars. Uh, and I'm talking about just the euro bond done in 2018 to 2021. 46 million dollars. Yeah. Is what your, it's, your, it's, your, it's your, what, your accounting You is. know, what has accrued, first of all, the 100,000 that they are now being paid plus whatever they get. But as I'm saying, if you pay the, the international transaction advisors or those who are, um, what do you call maybe, um, who supply services to the euro bond, you know, whichever way, 0 0.64, then the 1% that you have increased it to, uh -huh. who is getting that, 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 that difference of about 0.36? So okay. I have added all that into the calculation until I know who is actually getting that money. In fact, the interesting thing is that the last euro bond that was done because of the COVID, he confirmed that not much traveling was done and most of the work was actually done you know, via Zoom and others, which would have considerably bring down the cost in terms of uh, traveling and all that, but still 1%. So who is getting it? I mean, there are serious questions to be answered on this. Of course, in the plenary, in, the, in, the, in parliament, as I asked these questions, minister answered them whether you are satisfied or not. But when we had raised this under a, a, a motion of censure, mm -hmm. it carries much weight and we could have nailed him. I believe we could have nailed him on that and the petroleum thing, which he had spent. I mean, something so, else so, came up, mm -hmm. which showed that the seven percent acquisition that we got as a result of this Anadarko Cosmos tra uh, transaction yeah, uh, uh, was paid for by the Ministry of Finance. Of course, it's government buying those debt. The question even is, and then they did an unlending to GMPC. Mm -hmm. The question, first and foremost, is that the money that they had as a as a, did they come from did that money come from the consolidated fund is that where they paid it from or was it a borrowed money if it's money they borrowed where did they borrow it from and who approved it because only parliament approved and then of course the lifting out of that seven percent which created a hundred million issue i so, mean if you are the finance minister you spend over 164 million to buy shares and there's lifting out of that that gives you about hundred million dollars. Dollars, and it happened on your blind side, or do you know a minister who is looking for revenue? I find it very difficult to believe. And then the law is clear where the money should be paid. It the, should go to the the petroleum holding fund. That is the law. So and it ends up in some offshore company. 
So Which now that the, the, the report has been laid, is the, has the opportunity for all of these questions you are asking for the minister to come and answer been closed or been lost? Well, because there's going to be a debate amongst the MPP. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm into. The finance minister is not going to be in parliament. That's the thing. That's the unfortunate bit. It's the unfortunate bit. But we'll still, we'll still, we'll still, ask, the, we'll still ask the question because we are debating, you know, to, to, to remove the finance minister which has become an, quite an impossible task now. But Ghanaians must know. And that is why I am champion in that we, we will have to reinstate those two issues. And I, I believe that, you know, the, the speaker himself might not be pleased because, you know, seven grounds were laid and then a small group goes and make a decision to remove two of them. 